Please explain this verse of the Bible, John 10.30. I and my father are one. My Christian friends say that here in the Bible, Jesus, peace be upon him, is claiming divinity. <clears throat> the brother asked the question and asked me to explain the verse of the Bible that is the Gospel of John chapter number 10 verse number 30 where Jesus Christ peace be upon him says I and my father are one and he says that his Christian friends say that this in this verse clearly Jesus Christ peace be upon him he's claiming to be God and that is the reason we worship him as God the reply to this argument of the Christian is that if you read the context you will come to know what Jesus Christ peace be upon really mentioned and I mentioned many a times in my lecture that question answer session that there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ peace be upon him himself says that I am God always says worship me and I said that that if any Christian then point out anywhere from the Bible from any of the versions where Jesus Christ peace be upon himself says any unambiguous statement, any unequivocal statement where Jesus Christ peace be upon himself says that I am God or where he says worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity. Now let us analyze this verse of the Bible. To know the real meaning, you have to read the context. If you read a few verses before Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 23, it says, And Jesus entered in the temple in Solomon's porch. Gospel of John chapter number 10 verse number 24 says and the Jews came around him and said why how long does thou make us doubt if thou art the Christ tell us plainly verse number 25 Jesus Christ peace be upon him says I have told you but you believe not the work that I do in my father's name they bear witness of me verse number 26 you believe not because you are not my sheep. And I told you, verse number 27, my sheep, they hear me. I know them and they follow me. Verse number 28, I give them eternal life. They shall not perish. No man can pluck them out of my hand. Verse number 29. My father that gave me is greater than all. No man can pluck them out of my father's hand. Verse number 30 says, I and my father are one. Now if you read the context, what does it mean? When Jesus Christ, peace be upon me, says, I and my father are one, does it mean that one in omniscience? Does it mean one as one entity does it mean one in in uh, in nature here when jesus christ peace be says i and my father are one it means one in purpose if you read the context it says in gospel of john chapter number 10 verse number 28 that jesus christ peace be upon him says that they are my sheep they hear me. I know them. I give them eternal life. No man can pluck them out of my hand. Verse number 29 says, My father is greater, my father who give it to me is greater than all. No man can pluck them out of my father's hand. Then verse number 30 says, I and my father are one. So here it means one in purpose. With Jesus Christ and Almighty God, they are one in purpose. That means it is the duty of the messenger of Almighty God that when someone accepts faith he would want that person to remain in faith it's the duty and purpose of Almighty God that he would want the person to remain in faith it's the duty of purpose of all men and women in faith to want the person to remain in faith so here it is one in purpose nowhere does it mean one in nature or one in omniscient or one as omnipresent no Yet, if the Christian missionaries argue, no, 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 it is one in person and one in nature, 
then you say that read a few chapters ahead. It's mentioned in Gospel of John chapter number 17 verse number 21 to 23. That Jesus Christ peace be upon him says that my father in me, I and thee, we are one. The same one which is used in Gospel of John chapter number 10 verse number 30 is used in Gospel of John chapter number 17 verse number 21 where Jesus peace be upon him says my father is in me, I in thee, we are one. And in verse number 22 and 23 it says Jesus Christ peace be upon him says to his disciples to his 12 disciples that I in thee and you in me we are one. So when you ask them that God and Jesus Christ are one if they are one in person and immediately two verses later Jesus Christ peace be upon him says that the disciples are in me in I in thee we are one does it mean that there are 13 gods? Any Christian who knows the Bible will say no 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 here it means that Jesus Christ and the disciples they are one in purpose to deliver the message of God. Correct. So one in purpose. So here the same one is used. So there also Almighty God and Jesus Christ peace be upon him they are one in purpose. The main purpose is to keep the person in faith so that no one can pluck them out of their hand. Where does it say one in nature or one in omniscient or omnipresence? Further if you read the verses after Gospel of John chapter number 10 verse number 30. Gospel of John chapter number 10 verse number 31 say that the Jews picked up stones to stone Jesus peace be upon him. Verse number 32 says Jesus Christ peace be upon him says for which of the good works of mine do you want to stone me? For which of the good works that I do from my father do you want to stone me? Verse number 33, the Jews reply, we do not want you to, we do not want to stone you for your good work. We want to stone you for blaspheming. For you being man claiming to be God. Verse number 34, Jesus Christ peace be upon him says, isn't it, it mentioned, is it not mentioned in your scriptures that ye are gods? Verse number 35, and if you call God to the person to whom the word of God has come, the scripture is not broken. Now here Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is quoting the scripture of the Jews. And if you read the book of Psalms, chapter number 82, verse number 6, it says that ye are gods. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is saying that isn't it mentioned in your scripture that ye are gods? And your scriptures to the messengers of God, to whom the message of God has come, they are called as gods. Gods which is small g. So why then are you objecting to me? So when you read the context ahead and after, if you read before you come to know, it's talking about oneness in purpose, not oneness in nature and person. If you read afterwards also, they are, tr they are trying to find some excuse to kill Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. That's the reason. If you read, it clearly mentions nowhere did Jesus, peace be upon him, ever tried to claim that he was God. That's the reason the glorious Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 171, La Do not commit excesses in your religion. The Christian missionaries are going to one extreme and committing excesses by saying Jesus says God peace be upon him. Jesus was one of the mightiest messengers of God, but they commit excesses by saying he's God. On the other hand, you have the Jews who is calling the messenger of Allah, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, as an imposter and they want to stone him, they want to kill him. So both these two groups, the Ahli Kitab, the Jews and the Christians, they are going to different excesses. The Christians are calling the messenger of God as God, which is 100% shirk, it is haram. And the Jews, they are committing to the other extreme, the other excess, of calling a messenger of God as a fraud, as an imposter. So that's the reason Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims, we revere him, we love him, he's one of the mightiest messengers of God, but he's not God, we don't worship him, we respect him and we love him.